My name's James and I paint minis. This is Spoon 37 Minis. So in part one, I showed you a lot about the process involved in painting miniatures, including how to undercoat the model in black, and then move on to painting the ultramarine with two thin coats of McCrad blue. Part two moved on to showing you how to paint the metallic details in silver and gold, as well as some error correction after I made a few mistakes. Now moving on to part three, we're going to be painting various details such as the eyes, purity seal, the leather pouches on the back, and of course, the base, which none of which we've touched yet. Now we're going to make reference to the official color scheme and there's just one problem with that. Uh, the eyes are actually painted purple and there isn't a purple provided with the Citadel Essentials kit. So we have to mix together blue and red. So I thought this was an ideal opportunity to show you how to actually use the palette to mix paints together rather than just thin them down. As ever, we have to shake the paints, although I did notice in this case before I picked them up, both of these seemed fairly well mixed, so they don't need as much shaking as some of the other paints that we've done earlier in the earlier parts of this guide. Now, how do you mix two paints together when you've only got one brush? You don't want to stick a brush with red paint into a blue pot and vice versa. So what I'm actually going to use is a couple of cocktail sticks. You could use anything like this, coffee syrups or whatever. But the idea is to grab just a little bit of paint, put it on the palette with the one stick, then put that down and then use the other one to get a bit of blue on the palette. And then you can mix them together. Now, I use the sticks to mix these together. This way it saves a bit of wear and tear on the brushes. Uh, but then what you'll see is as I'm mixing, I decide that the mix is a bit too blue and lacking in red. Now I don't want to put the contaminated end of the stick back into the red paint. So what I do is I flip it over and get some red paint on the other end of the cocktail stick in order to make sure that it doesn't contaminate the paint in the pot. Now I'm trying my best, but this doesn't produce the brightest purple color I've ever mixed. But then both of these blue and red pigments are a little bit on the dark side. And so it's not the ideal color, but it's a lot closer to the sort of purple magenta color that the official color scheme calls for, which I thought was better than just painting them red, which is a bit of a cop out. Okay, so now I'm adding a bit of water to thin this down and pulling the brush through it and twisting to make a nice sharp point so we can get into those fine detail. Now whilst I predominantly mix this as an eye colour, what I found was the purity seal generally is also roughly the same kind of magenta colour. They're not actually red despite a lot of people thinking they are. They're a, they're a kind of reddish purple colour. So I decided to start here as it's a bigger area and then you can sort of psych yourself up for painting the absolutely tiny area that is the eyes. are painting this do be sure to go over the edges not all over the shoulder guard obviously but you do need to get the edges and then you can move on to the eyes for which it's super important to have a sharp tip on the brush or you're not going to be able to do this very well and then it's just a case of being very careful and coming in from the side like so and then with a few brush strokes you've got purple in the right places and then same again on the other side so for some reason I do find the left eye ever so slightly more difficult than the right. It may just be the way you approach it with the brush.
you should find with a little bit of practice just tilting it to the right angle and getting a nice sharp tip on the brush this actually isn't too difficult to get the main eye color in gets a bit more difficult when you start worrying about shading and highlighting the eyes and putting tiny little catch lights in there. Now, as I said before, we need to do the purity seal. We've done the wax seal at the top, but we also need to paint the scrolls down below. So I'm using, again, from the Citadel Essentials kit, Rakarth Flesh, which should look like this when mixed. And we're going to do two thin coats, so we're just going to start the first one here by putting some on the palette and watering it down so we've got a nice thin coat that won't obscure any details. Now because these actually protrude from the shoulder guard it's actually quite easy to paint these. There's nothing really near them apart from the sort of purplish wax seal that you've just painted. So as long as you're careful around that area, it's fairly easy to, to get at all these from all sides. I would recommend painting the inside, because although you might be like, oh, well, you won't see it. Well, you will from some angles, actually. So just it's good practice to make sure that you paint it from all sides. Now, despite this being a very useful colour, uh, there aren't actually many parts of the model where you use this, so once we're done with this bit of scroll work, we're actually going to move on to a completely different colour. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about this. We're going to be painting the leather pouches. Now, on the box, they're actually slightly highlighted grey and edge highlighted in grey, but the overall pouch is black. Now for a beginner I wouldn't recommend this because this is quite difficult so instead I'm going to use Mornfang Brown simply to pick them out because everybody knows that leather is brown, right? So they're leather pouches, let's paint them with the only brown in the kit, Mornfang Brown. As ever it's best practice to shake the paint and then water it down a little bit on the palette before moving on to actually painting the pouches themselves. Now, as far as I can tell, the only pouches on this particular model are just these ones on the back, underneath the backpack. Uh, obviously, on more detailed models, leaders, character models, things like that, there would probably be, you know, half a dozen of these things all over the place. So, this is, we're getting away with comparatively easily, uh, but even so, there are details that need to be filled in. Don't worry too much if the coverage at this point isn't perfect. You are painting straight over black with the brown paint. And of course it may be that some of that black shows through, but that's why we're going to come back later and do a second coat so that it has a nice good color coverage. And then eventually we're going to come back once those two thin coats are dry and we're going to paint the silver buckles on these patches. But that's uh, very much a finishing touch. Now, having just finished those, we're going to do something that's a little bit new to me. Um, normally my go-to texture paint for bases is a Vallejo product. I've never actually used the Citadel versions, but supposedly you can paint them on, so let's give it a try. Let's shake it as if it's a normal paint and see what happens. As it turns out, absolutely nothing has moved. So <laughs> let's think again. 
So returning to my old tricks, I've got a fresh cocktail stick and I'm going to stir this up. I don't know if this settles out into separate parts or not, but giving it a stir seems to be a good idea. And that's, that was the purpose of shaking it, just to mix it up. So, and what I eventually find with this is having stirred it, a lot of the stuff sticks then to the cocktail stick. So I put that out onto the palette. I should maybe scrape it on the sides of the, the paint pot and stick the bush. No, stick the brush straight in there um, but I thought this was a good idea now bear with me on this step um, strictly speaking I should probably be using something like a small spatula but I'm determined to do this whole model with nothing but the contents of the Citadel Essentials kit and that means the only applicator tool I have is the brush so there might be a few people thinking oh that doesn't look too good for the brush and I dare say it isn't uh, but as it turned out once I was done washing this off proved to be very easy indeed so I'm assuming this whole texture thing is completely water soluble because it certainly washed off the brush very very easily it's just a little bit awkward to apply with a small brush where you can't pick up terribly much of it at once yet you kind of need to apply it quite thick in order to cover the surface The other thing here is I'm having to hold the model quite awkwardly because this whole way through I've been holding it by the base but if I do that I'll end up with it all over my fingers and then if I change my finger position I'll end up with Armageddon dust all over the model which is not desirable at all. So I'm having to kind of hold it with my fingers on the backpack and then one underneath or I've just changed my grip to try gripping it by the edge of the base but that's not as stable as it was so perhaps not ideal. Now, unlike the other paints, because this one, strictly speaking, isn't painting quite the same way, if you see what I mean, it's it's purely there for the texture and then obviously a little bit of color. We're not going to do two thin coats of this. I dare say you could, and it would probably look just fine, but generally I'm pretty sure this stuff's supposed to be applied in one thick coat, and once it's fully dry, it should have the appearance of what they're calling Armageddon dust, obviously from the planet Armageddon where war has been waging between the Imperium of Man and Orcs for centuries, if not millennia. So it's supposed to look like a bit of a desert waste, wasteland, even though I think Armageddon was supposed to be a, a world of hive cities originally. I don't know if any of them are still standing after so much warfare. Now I am trying to push this right up against the edge of the boots. I don't want to get it too high up, but it, there's nothing wrong with this guy churning up a bit of sand as he walks. And even you could have it higher up the legs a little bit as sort of, you know, natural dust and dirt accumulating from him walking through the wasteland. Uh, but I do always try to get the text right up to the edges, even if I end up then having to repaint a little bit of the armor, that doesn't matter because it looks much more natural if the stuff goes right up to the edge of the boot. Whereas if you've got like this gap constantly, it always looks a little bit wrong, like as if the, you know, the ground's disappeared where the model's standing. Now here's a moment of truth, cleaning the brush, which I am cleaning quite thoroughly. And as it turns out, it just runs away in water, so that's brilliant. Okay, now moving swiftly on, we've mixed up some more of the purple mix. In fact, actually, I think that may be the same purple mix for earlier, which hasn't from earlier, which hasn't dried out. I'm just going over the purity seal very carefully so as not to get any of this purple paint on anything else and then we're going to use it on the eyes again. Now some time has passed so obviously the texture paint that I'm gripping the edges of is actually dry so don't worry about that. Now I'm just getting the brush to a nice pointed tip by rotating it as I pull it back in order to do the eyes again which is a question of repeating the same process from before coming in from the side with a nice sharp tip and you should be able to paint the whole of the eye slightly more awkward on this side because I'm coming in sort of from a different angle but it's still doable from this side with this brush 
Now, doing second coats of Rakarth flesh on the purity seals. If you like white paper scroll, I'm actually using an off white. Obviously, this is more of a kind of gray color, but relative to everything else, this looks excessively bright. So, it really does look like it's bright white, but I assure you it's a kind of slightly brownish, light gray, um, which is an ideal color for sort of aging parchment, as it turns out, because you could highlight this with white and it would look great. that done we're going to move on to the brown leather pouches to do a second coat there and you may have noticed that the edge of the base is also lacking paint now on the box art and the official color scheme they've actually used a color called Krieg Brown which as in Death Corps of Krieg um, but that's actually like the the go-to heavy metal base edge color now and so I'm going to mimic that by using some of this uh, Mornfang Brown on the edges of the base because it's the closest colour we have rather than you know, going out of our way and buying an additional paint which is just basically a different shade of brown. Right, so in order to paint the edge of the base, I have to grip the model rather differently. And so as to get to the edges of the base, don't worry too much about getting paint on your finger. It's not the end of the world. It does wash off quite easily. Uh, but you do need a finger underneath it, ideally, to stabilize it. And then again, just like everything else, uh, not only do the details get two thin coats of paint, but so will the edges of the base. And of course, you will actually find that people look at this base edge so this one really has to be a quality paint job so you've really got to make sure that this if nothing else has two coats of paint there is another reason for painting these edges brown um, lots and lots and lots of painting guides tell you to paint the edges of the base black the idea is giving a, a more stark contrast between whatever the top of the base is and the edge of the base. That way it seems, if you like, better looking without really doing anything special. Um, the idea of having the base edge brown is not only is it therefore different to all of those painting guides, but it also is supposed to help it blend in with a variety of terrain. So this should look okay whether it's in a desert setting an urban setting, a forest setting, or whatever. So it's just a kind of catch-all colour, which is why I think the heavy metal team gradually adopted it. Now I'm going to put this down on the surface, which it could stick to. As it turned out, it wasn't too bad. Um, but obviously with paint right on the edges of that base, it could have actually stuck to it, which in the end, it didn't. Um, but it is a risky take, which is why I say to protect the surface you're working on in the very first part of this painting guide. And now we're moving on. Once that was dry, so that's obviously had 30 minutes or more of drying time. And now we're gonna paint the second coats. as we're painting this that it is actually becoming a much stronger colour, a much more uniform colour and it's much more like the edges on the um, you know, heavy metal box version. Um, not that I claim that this is up to their standard of course, I'm just saying it's similar in the sense of you have a nice consistent brown colour on the edge of the base.
and I'm just trying to go over a few bits, make sure I've got coverage in all the right places, and then that's pretty much done. And so I'm actually going to, at this point, let that dry, and wash the brushes and so on, and come back and do the silver buckles and so on. Now, in order to finally do the finishing touches, we're just getting a bit of lead belcher, and watering that down. And the idea is that we're going to do the sort of rivet and buckle on the leather pouches. That way, every part of the model actually has the right kind of colors you'd expect. And that's what I would consider to be a finished model. Right, and that pretty much finishes us off. And I've taken a couple of pictures with my camera and the strong lights. And this is what you're all left with. Every part of the model has the right color in the right place. But as you can see, as I'm expecting this to be like a first model, no real shading or highlighting. So that's it, that's the basics. Right, if you watched this far, first of all, thank you for watching, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell-shaped icon so you can get notifications about future videos. I hope they will be coming out soon.